Welcome back to Twisted Timeline, continuing our series, Chronicles of Cruelty. We find ourselves again wandering the foggy lanes of Victorian London, on the trail of history's most infamous phantom Jack the Ripper. Over the course of our journey thus far, we have embarked on a bone-chilling exploration of the Ripper's crimes, the victims' tragic lives, the shuddering impact on society, and the initial investigations that sent ripples through the police force. We've sifted through a list of peculiar suspects and examined disturbing letters, allegedly from the Ripper himself. Today, we press deeper into the fog, exploring the myriad theories that aim to unveil this specter. Over the years, numerous theories about the identity of Jack the Ripper have been proposed, with suspects ranging from the plausible to the downright outlandish. Below are some of the most persistent theories. Montague John Drewitt, a barrister by profession, Drew also worked part-time as an assistant schoolmaster in a boarding school in Blackheath, London. Suspicion fell on him due to a number of factors, chief among them being his own family's suspicion. This information came to light through a memorandum written by Assistant Chief Constable Sir Melville Magneton. He stated that Drew had disappeared at the time of the last murder and his body was later found floating in the River Thames in the last month of 1888 leading to conjectures that the string of murders might have ended because the murderer was no longer alive. Another point leading to his suspicion was that he was said to have had a surgical knowledge, a theory constructed due to the mutilations done to the victims. However, despite these speculations, no hard evidence has ever been discovered to link Drew directly to the crimes. Aaron Kosminski Kosminski was a Polish-Jewish immigrant who resided in Whitechapel during the time of the murders. He worked as a hairdresser in Whitechapel during the period in which the murders took place. Records indicate that he was admitted to a series of lunatic asylums from 1891, where he remained until his death. His insanity took the form of auditory hallucinations, a paranoid fear of being fed by others, and a refusal to wash or bathe. The primary reason for suspicion arose from a statement by Chief Inspector Donald Swanson, who led the Ripper investigation in his copy of Assistant Chief Constable Sir Robert Anderson's memoirs, which identified Kosminski as having been a suspect. Dr. Thomas Neil Cream Dr. Cream was a doctor of Scottish origin who was executed for the poisoning of four London prostitutes in the year 1892. There is a disputed story that he claimed to be Jack the Ripper in the moments before his execution. Despite this, records show that Dr. Cream was imprisoned in Illinois for another murder during the time of the Ripper killings making it impossible for him to be the Ripper. Walter Sickert A prominent painter of the Victorian era, Sickert's connection to the Ripper case comes from the modern era. In 2002, crime novelist Patricia Cornwell published a book in which she claimed Sickert was Jack the Ripper. She pointed to Sickert's morbid paintings and a supposed obsession with the murders as evidence of his guilt. Despite her claims, most experts dismiss the idea of Sickert being the infamous killer due to lack of compelling evidence. Prince Albert Victor, Duke of Clarence and Avondale. One of the most sensational theories involves Queen Victoria's grandson, Prince Albert Victor. This theory posits that the Ripper murders were part of a royal Masonic conspiracy. The Duke had allegedly fathered a child with a Catholic shop girl, and the murders were an attempt to silence those who knew of the affair. This theory popularized by the 1978 film Jack the Ripper, has been widely discredited due to lack of credible evidence. James Maybrick Maybrick was a Liverpool cotton merchant. Suspicion fell on him in the late 20th century when a diary surfaced, purportedly written by Maybrick, in which he confessed to the Ripper murders. Despite this, many experts consider the diary to be a hoax, as there is no other evidence linking Maybrick to the crimes and he was not considered a suspect at the time of the murders. Despite over a century of investigation and speculation, the identity of Jack the Ripper remains an enigma, making it one of the most enduring mysteries in the history of crime. The royal conspiracy theory is certainly one of the more sensationalist theories that have emerged in the quest to identify Jack the Ripper. Let's dive a little deeper into the central figures in this theory. Sir William Go. In the context of the royal conspiracy theory, Sir William Withy Gull, a physician to Queen Victoria, is often posited as the actual murderer. This theory was popularized in the graphic novel From Hell by Alan Moore and Eddie Campbell, which was later adapted into a film. 
the theory suggests that Gull was tasked with carrying out the murders on behalf of the royal family to cover up a supposed secret marriage between Prince Albert Victor and a commoner. However, there is no historical evidence to support this theory. In fact, Gull was in his 70s and in poor health at the time of the murders, making it highly unlikely that he could have been involved in such physically demanding and brutal acts. Prince Albert Victor, also known as Prince Eddie, he was the eldest son of Albert Edward, the Prince of Wales, later King Edward VII, and the grandson of the reigning British monarch, Queen Victoria. The theory proposes that Prince Albert Victor had secretly married a Catholic sharp girl, Annie Crook, and fathered a child with her. Supposedly, this secret was discovered by five prostitutes who then attempted to blackmail the royal family, leading to their murders to ensure their silence. This theory was popularized by the book Jack the Ripper, The Final Solution by Stephen Knight. However, it's important to note that there is no historical evidence of such a marriage or child. In fact, at the time when Prince Albert Victor was supposed to be in London fathering a child, he was actually in Germany attending military training. The royal conspiracy theory is indeed a tantalizing narrative, due to its inclusion of figures from the highest levels of Victorian society. However, historians and criminologists generally dismiss it, as it lacks substantial evidence and relies heavily on supposition and the sensationalism surrounding the Ripper case. The facts indicate that it's highly unlikely that either Sir William Gull or Prince Albert Victor had any connection to the Jack the Ripper murders. Exploring the medical professional theory, which is based on the precision of the gruesome mutilations found on the victim's bodies. This theory posits that the killer had a strong knowledge of human anatomy, suggesting he may have been a doctor, surgeon, or someone involved in a profession that required medical training. There were a number of suspects considered under this theory. Thomas Neal Cream. He was a doctor who had been convicted of murder in the United States, and later in England. However, he was in prison in Illinois at the time of the Ripper murders, making it impossible for him to be the killer. Nonetheless, a myth emerged that with his last words before being hanged in 1892, he confessed to being Jack the Ripper. Historians, however, have dismissed this claim. Michael Ostrog Ostrog was a Russian doctor and convicted criminal. He was suggested as a suspect by McNaughton who included him in his memorandum due to his medical background and history of violent behavior. However, Ostrog was likely in France at the time of the murders, making him an unlikely candidate for the Ripper. Francis Tumbledy, an American quack doctor who had been arrested on a charge unrelated to the murders at the time of the Ripper killings. Tumbledy had a strong misogynistic streak, having been charged with gross indecency and reported to keep a collection of uteruses. After being released on bail, he fled to France and then the United States. His flight, coinciding with the end of the murders, made him a compelling suspect. George Chapman Born Severin Antoniowicz Klosowski in Poland, he emigrated to England in the 1880s and worked as a barber surgeon. Chapman was known to be violent and was later convicted of poisoning three of his wives. Some police officials suspected him to be the Ripper but the modus operandi of his confirmed killings, poisoning, differed greatly from the Ripper's brutal mutilations. Frederick Bailey Deeming Deeming was an English-born Australian who had been convicted of the murder of his wife and four children in Australia and had also killed a previous wife in England. Despite the different method of his confirmed killings and the fact that he was most likely in South Africa during the Ripper murders, his brutal acts and temporal proximity to the Ripper crimes put him under suspicion. Although the medical professional theory is enticing, none of the above suspects have been conclusively linked to the Jack the Ripper murders. Many modern criminologists also dispute the premise of this theory, suggesting that the mutilations performed by the Ripper could have been done by anyone with a basic knowledge of anatomy, not necessarily a trained medical professional. This is one of the reasons the case continues to provoke debates among Ripperologists and remains one of the most enduring mysteries in the annals of crime. The multiple murderers theory suggests that the crimes attributed to Jack the Ripper were not the work of a single individual, but instead were perpetrated by multiple killers. This theory disrupts the commonly held belief of a single, phantom-like serial killer haunting the streets of Whitechapel. Those who support the multiple murderers theory often point to differences in the modus operandi of the killer or killers, the locations of the murders, and the timings. Let's look at each of these aspects. 
modus operandi. The canonical five victims attributed to Jack the Ripper were all killed by deep throat cuts. However, there were variations in the other injuries. For example, Elizabeth Stride had no other injuries apart from the fatal wound to her throat, unlike the mutilations found on the other victims. Some believe this could suggest the involvement of a different murderer. Locations. While the murders all took place within a relatively small area in Whitechapel, some question whether one individual would risk committing such violent acts in a range of different locations. Additionally, Mary Jane Kelly was murdered in her home, a significant departure from the other outdoor crime scenes. Timings. Most of the murders occurred in the late summer and autumn of 1888, but there were other murders in Whitechapel both before and after these dates that shared some similarities, leading to speculation about their potential connection to the Ripper crimes. It is possible, according to this theory, that copycat killers were coincidental, unrelated murderers could have been at work. Suspect Descriptions Various witness accounts of potential suspects often differed greatly suggesting the possibility of multiple killers. However, the reliability of these descriptions is questionable as they often contradict each other. While the multiple murderers theory does provide alternative explanations for some of the inconsistencies and questions surrounding the Ripper murders, it is worth noting that most experts continue to believe that a single individual was responsible. Like many aspects of the Jack the Ripper case, the multiple murderers theory remains a topic of intense debate and speculation. In the quest to unmask the notorious killer, some have turned to modern scientific techniques, particularly DNA analysis, to examine evidence linked to the case. In the last few decades, various DNA tests have been conducted on artifacts believed to be connected to the Ripper case, the most notable being the shawl supposedly found near Catherine Edo's body. However, the shawl's provenance has been heavily debated, and many experts don't consider it a reliable piece of evidence. Dr. Jari Lauhilainen, a senior lecturer in molecular biology, and Dr. David Miller, a researcher at the University of Leeds, carried out a DNA analysis on the shawl in the early 21st century. Their tests involved using modern techniques to try and extract DNA samples from the stains on the fabric, which they believed to be blood and possibly other bodily fluids. Their analysis led them to Aaron Kosminski, a Polish barber living in Whitechapel at the time and one of the prime suspects in the Jack the Ripper case. The DNA allegedly matched a living descendant of Kosminski, suggesting a possible breakthrough. However, the findings sparked intense debate within the community of Afropirologists. Critics pointed out that the shawl had been handled by many people over the years, making contamination a significant concern. Furthermore, the methods used in the DNA analysis have been questioned for their validity and interpretation. Regarding the letters purportedly sent by the Ripper, none have been conclusively linked to the killer. Their from hell letter, which was accompanied by a piece of human kidney, could have been an excellent source of DNA. However, both the letter and the kidney have been lost to history. With all the controversy surrounding the evidence and the methodologies used in these DNA tests, it's safe to say that the mystery of Jack the Ripper's identity remains unsolved. The chance of definitively solving it through DNA evidence appears slim due to the age and questionable provenance of the available artifacts, as well as the risk of contamination. Geographic profiling is an investigative methodology that uses the locations of a connected series of crimes to determine the most probable area of an offender's base of operations, known as the anchor point, which could be the offender's home, place of work, or a favorite social spot. It's a strategic tool commonly used today in criminology. Applying this methodology to the Jack the Ripper case has been a fascinating journey, given the precise geographical concentration of the killings. All five murders attributed to the Ripper occurred within a square mile in the Whitechapel district of East London, between August and November in 1888. In 2006, Kim Rosmo, a criminal justice professor and former detective, and Richard Helmer, a geographic information systems expert, performed a geographic profiling analysis of the Ripper crimes. The method used was the Rosmo formula, a complex mathematical model that calculates the probability of an offender's residence based on the geographic locations of linked crime scenes. The model generates a geoprofile, a three-dimensional color-coded map, with the areas of highest probability displayed in red or hot zones and the areas of lower probability displayed in cooler colors such as blue and green. The heart of the zone, 
the higher the likelihood that the offender's anchor point lies within it. When the Rosmo formula was applied to the Ripper murders, the highest probability zones were located in and around Flower and Dean Street, a notorious criminal rookery at the time. This result intriguingly aligns with some Ripperologists' beliefs that the killer likely resided within the heart of Whitechapel, possibly in one of the lodging houses for transient men. One of the main suspects in the case, Aaron Kosminski, lived in the vicinity of these high-probability zones. While this adds some credibility to the suspicion against him, it's vital to remember that geographic profiling is not definitive proof of guilt. It's just one of many tools investigators can use to narrow down their search. In conclusion, the application of modern geographic profiling to the historical Ripper case represents an exciting development in the ongoing attempts to solve this enduring mystery. However, without corroborative evidence, the geographical connections remain just one part of a larger, unsolved puzzle. The quest to unmask Jack the Ripper continues to fascinate and confound researchers, criminologists, and enthusiasts. However, there are significant hurdles and ethical considerations that arise in these historical investigations. First, there's the hurdle of limited and degraded physical evidence. The crimes occurred over a century ago, during a time when the collection and preservation of evidence were not as systematic or advanced as they are today. Even with the advancements in forensic technology, analyzing and obtaining valid results from such old and poorly preserved evidence presents a huge challenge. One attempt to overcome this was in the case of the shawl allegedly found at the scene of Catherine Edo's murder, one of the Ripper's victims. In 2014, businessman and Ripperologist Russell Edwards claimed to have conducted DNA tests on the shawl that identified the Ripper as Aaron Kosminski. However, the results have been widely criticized due to possible contamination over the years, casting doubt on the validity of the findings. Secondly, there are significant ethical concerns related to the investigation. The use of DNA in this context raises questions about privacy and consent. Descendants of the alleged Ripper or his victims may not wish to have their family history scrutinized and potentially distorted by these investigations. Furthermore, there's the question of what purpose is served by identifying the Ripper now, more than a century after the crimes were committed. It's a line of inquiry that raises profound questions about our fascination with such macabre history and the lengths we're willing to go to solve it. Finally, there's the ethical consideration of media portrayal and public interest. The grisly fascination with the Ripper often overlooks the tragic stories of his victims. There is an ongoing discussion in the true crime community about ensuring respectful representation of victims and their families. In conclusion, while the allure of solving one of history's most infamous mysteries is compelling, it's essential to navigate these investigations with care and respect given the inherent difficulties and ethical considerations they present. Now let's explore how Jack the Ripper has manifested in literature over the years, particularly in classics such as Marie Belloc Lowen's The Larger and Patricia Cornwell's Portrait of a Killer. Published in 1917, Marie Belloc Lowen's The Larger is a suspenseful novel that takes the mystery of Jack the Ripper as its inspiration. The story revolves around a London couple, the Buntings, who rent a room to a mysterious man named Mr. Sloth. As they begin to notice Mr. Sloth's strange behaviors and eccentricities, the couple becomes increasingly suspicious that their larger may be the elusive serial killer haunting the streets of London. The novel effectively captures the fear and paranoia that engulfed London during the Ripper's reign of terror. It also explores the moral dilemma of the Buntings, who need the income from Mr. Sloth but grapple with their suspicions of his sinister activities. Nearly a century later, Patricia Cornwell's Portrait of a Killer, Jack the Ripper Case Closed, published in 2002, approached the Ripper myth from a different angle. In this non-fiction work, Cornwell, a crime novelist by trade, turns her hand to real-life detective work. She famously spent millions of dollars on research, including purchasing a painting by Walter Sickert, an artist she identified as her prime suspect for being Jack the Ripper. Cornwell's book represents a modern approach to the Ripper case, applying cutting-edge technology and forensic analysis in an attempt to conclusively identify the killer. However, her conclusion has been met with considerable skepticism by many Ripperologists, who question her methodology and the certainty of her findings. These two works illustrate the enduring allure of the Ripper myth. From Lone's exploration of fear and suspicion to Cornwell's modern investigative approach, 
the legend of Jack the Ripper continues to provoke fascination, intrigue, and debate in literary circles and beyond. Jack the Ripper's representation in cinema and his influence on music, video games, and graphic novels has been nothing short of sublime. In the realm of cinema, Jack the Ripper's influence is particularly noticeable in Alfred Hitchcock's films. His 1927 silent film The Larger, A Story of the London Fog was heavily inspired by the Ripper crimes. The film's central character is a mysterious man who rents a room in a London boring house, where a series of murders begins to occur. The plot, characters, and atmosphere of the film capture the unease and suspicion of the Ripper's era. Moving forward in time, we encounter the film time after time from 1979. In this unusual mix of science fiction and historical drama, H.G. Wells pursues Jack the Ripper into the future, the then present day late 1970s, using a time machine. The film juxtaposes the Victorian era's darkest shadows against a modern setting, creating a unique Ripper narrative. In more recent times, the Ripper legend was brought to life in the 2001 thriller From Hell, starring Johnny Depp. This film delves into the grim details of the Whitechapel murders and incorporates elements of the royal conspiracy theory into its plot. The Ripper's influence extends beyond film into music, video games, and graphic novels. In the music world, his story has been referenced by a wide range of artists from heavy metal bands like Judas Priest, who released a song titled The Ripper in 1976, to pop musicians such as Screaming Lord Such whose 1963 song Jack the Ripper is a cult classic. In the gaming industry, Jack the Ripper has featured in various titles such as Assassin's Creed Syndicate, Jack the Ripper, a 2015 expansion pack where players hunt the Ripper in the grimy streets of Victorian London. Finally, in graphic novels, Alan Moore's From Hell, published in serialized form from 1989 to 1996, stands out. This complex, Meticulously researched narrative presents a unique perspective on the Ripper murders in Victorian society. The graphic novel later served as the basis for the From Hell movie. Through these examples, we see that Jack the Ripper's legend has been reinterpreted and reshaped across different media platforms, each contributing to our collective understanding of this notorious figure. The Ripper's enduring presence reflects not only a fascination with his crimes but also a broader interest in the atmosphere of fear and uncertainty that pervaded his era. The specter of Jack the Ripper lingers long after the foggy nights of his reign in Victorian London. The fear he engendered and the fascination he stirred have permeated far beyond the confines of the Whitechapel district. His eerie legacy can be traced through various facets of our culture and societal psyche. Firstly, Jack the Ripper gave birth to a macabre fascination with serial killers. While he was not the first, his crimes were so chilling and his legend so enduring that they have left an indelible mark on the public consciousness. The Ripper's shadow looms large in the genre of true crime, a category that continues to captivate audiences worldwide. From books and podcasts to documentaries and feature films, the consuming desire to understand the minds of such criminals can be traced back to the terror-stricken streets of late 19th century London. Furthermore, the Ripper murders had a significant impact on the field of criminal investigation. The inability of the police to apprehend the murderer, despite the intense public scrutiny and pressure, led to a public outcry for more effective law enforcement methods. This triggered advancements in forensic science, detective work, and crime scene analysis, changing the landscape of criminal investigation forever. Moreover, the Ripper's reign left a profound imprint on society's perception of urban life. Victorian London was portrayed as a labyrinth of danger and vice, further enhancing the fear of city life. This portrayal resonated deeply within society, reinforcing a sense of caution and suspicion in urban environments that persists to this day. Finally, the Ripper Saga also touched on issues of social inequality and the plight of the underprivileged. His victims, all women of the lower social class, drew attention to the harsh conditions faced by many in the Victorian era. This aspect of the Ripper narrative continues to stimulate discussions on social justice and the intersection of crime and poverty. As we see, the effects of the Ripper's heinous crimes ripple outward, influencing our culture, our views on crime and punishment, and our understanding of society itself. Like a stone cast into a pond, the ripples from this twisted timeline continue to spread, touching upon aspects of life that the Ripper himself could never have foreseen.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have journeyed together through the darkened streets of Whitechapel, through the horrifying details of the crimes, through the lives of those unfortunate victims, and through the shadowy figures of our suspects, Aaron Kosminski, Montague John Drute, and Francis Tumbley. Each suspect presents a unique set of circumstances and peculiarities. Consider Kosminski, a local resident of Whitechapel with known mental health issues, found near the scenes and implicated by disputed DNA evidence. Reflect upon Drute, a barrister whose tragic suicide followed closely on the heels of the last canonical murder, arousing suspicion. And ponder over Tumbley, the American quack doctor with a history of nefarious activity, who abruptly fled to France following the murders. I ask you to weigh the presented evidence, to examine the timelines, motives, and peculiarities. Ask yourselves who had the opportunity, who had the knowledge, whose actions aroused the greatest suspicion. While we may not have the absolute certainty we desire, your task is to consider who among these suspects, based on the evidence we have explored, could most likely have been Jack the Ripper. Remember, your determination should be based on a preponderance of the evidence, which suspect appears more likely than not to have been the one haunting the streets of Whitechapel in the autumn of terror in 1888. We may never have absolute certainty, but you can bring us closer to a conclusion in this chapter of history. Leave your comments below. While the identity of Jack the Ripper may forever remain a mystery, the stories of his victims, the impact of his crimes, and the legacy he has left behind continue to echo through the ages. Join us next time on Twisted Timeline as we unearth more tales of history's most notorious figures.